So hi Kelly, thank you for joining me today. I'd like to start by asking you to tell me a bit about your background and experience as a patient and how you became to be such a vocally patient. You know, I actually didn't plan to become any kind of a patient advocate. But as I looked online as a, a new RA patient, I saw patient stories and I looked through journals and I did research and a lot of things didn't make sense to me. And I actually say that sometimes the more I read, the more mystified I became. So I, I had a goal after that to put together a website for patients where they could communicate with each other and encourage each other, but also they could put good information. So we started there. I be ended up becoming more of a vocal e-patient because I was trying to be the voice for patients. The patients that I met, whose voice wasn't being used, whose voice wasn't being heard. Um, did you find any patient organizations, support groups, or other information sources to be useful and supportive when you're a patient? There, well, there are some large websites that do have RA sections, and I think they were a little bit helpful to me at the beginning. I, I just wanted to go deeper, but I would definitely mention Health Central and their, their RA pages. They have several patient blogs there, and that's what makes those pages useful. And they do have a community there, and they allow... Um, you know, a lot of commenting and interacting to go on, so that's a big help. And how much direct interaction do you see between pharma and rheumatoid arthritis patients? I really don't think I've seen very much. Um, I know that over the last year, Bristol Myers um, worked with um, um, one arthritis group to do some town halls in several cities, and I knew a couple of people that went. The feedback was that it was kind of commercial and really promoted the product. And that's, that's really the only one that I have knowledge of. What other resources and support do you think would be helpful for patients with rheumatoid arthritis? Well, I think there's an enormous amount of resources needed. And I think it's helpful sometimes to think in terms of something that we're more familiar with and that we've made a little bit of progress with in the last couple of decades, and that's diabetes. When you think about the amount of resources that diabetes patients have available to them. Um, you know, in our country, we hear about this, you know, um, free literature ads or centers where you, you might drive by hospital and see, you know, diabetes education centers and there are diabetes educators, um, you know, who are, um, you know, qualified and certified. So um, I think if you think in terms of comparing with diabetes, all of that is needed for RA. Um, so there's not anything at all available to educate patients or to encourage patients or, or to help be sure that they're getting all the tests that they need or that they understand their medications. Or, you know, for example, I had um, I had been using for two and a half years um, one certain biologic. My doctor didn't tell me that it wasn't working. I shouldn't have then stepped up to a double dose and continued that way for two and a half years. So it, it was a long time before I learned you know, there were other options and maybe I should even be trying other biologics. So, you know, that's kind of surprising, but there really wasn't anything out there for our age. Uh, that's why recently um, I worked with some patients and we started a nonprofit just for our age. And as a vocal e-patient yourself, how would you like to be engaging with the pharma industry? Well, I, I, I would like to see, um, I'd like to see patients and patient organizations and patient groups supported and given um, given resources or given a voice. And I think sometimes the industry itself has the resources to do that. So I think that's a good thing to do. Um, I'd like to see the use of patient input um, into industry in an open way, whether we're talking about drug development itself, um, learning from patients at, at every phase, um, in clinical trial design, I think we could make more progress at solving this puzzle. I think patients would like to like to interact more. Great. Um, what was your impression of the pharma industry before your illness, and how has that perception changed since? Well, actually, it was very positive. I'm, you know, and I'm an optimist, and I, I tend to disbelieve a lot of conspiracy theories that I hear, and I do hear, um, you know, from our patients, you know. Our disease isn't curable, and all they look for are ways to manage it. So, you know, some some patients do believe that um, the pharma industry doesn't really want to help patients because they don't want to cure our, our incurable disease. And 
I really tend to disagree with um, most of those um, conspiracy theories, but but I would have to say that from from what I've seen, it, it might be it might be a little bit more negative now because I'd like to see um, more openness and I'd like to see the wall between patients and industry kind of be be brought down or have more windows. I know that industry interacts with doctors and with their professional organizations, and I really don't see that patients have a voice. And do you think that there are any other ways that pharma can improve how they're perceived? Well, I'm not a marketer at all. <laughs> but I, I, like I said, I am an optimist, and I believe that um, perceptions are improved as, as things are done that are good. So doing the, doing the right thing. Um, doing research that benefits patients and letting patients know that that research is being done to benefit patients and giving patients a, a voice. And of course, charitable work and donating to patient initiatives and helping patients to have a voice and helping to, to increase their own influence and their uh, participation in the process. Okay, and finally, what would be your key message to the industry? How do you think it can better meet patient needs? Well, I guess in addition to the other things that I've said, um, I would just say that the patients are the only ones who know what their needs really are you know, for RA or, or for any other condition. So I think that there needs to be a respectful and open way to interact with patients to, um, to receive communication from them. So I hope that we could try to see if that wall could come down or, like I said, build more windows so that there's better communication. Great, Kelly. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. PharmaForum.com is the dynamic online information and discussion portal for the pharmaceutical industry.